All right, guys, look, I don't have to tell you or hope I don't have to tell you how big of a deal this COVID-19 coronavirus has become. It's on literally everyone's mind, but I did want to make this video to let you know that there is a way you can help fight it with your computer using idle CPU time, idle processing power when you're not using the computer. So it's for free. Just, of course, you have to pay for whatever electricity your computer's using, that's it. And this is thanks to a project called Folding at Home. Some of you may have heard of this before, you may have used it in the past, but kind of forgot about it, or you may have never heard of it. So I'm telling you right now that now is a good time to contribute to it. I actually have it running on the background right there, you can see. If you're not familiar with Folding at Home, it was basically started at Stanford University back in the year 2000, and it essentially lets you contribute your computer's GPU and CPU processing power to do medical research and you can have it either set all the time while you're working and everything or just have it set when your computer is not being used and your idle time can then be contributed to the projects. And as of right now, the team running Fold at Home has said that they've prioritized the whole network to focus the computing power to be used on coronavirus related workloads. And if you're wondering, it does actually work. The Folding at Home project has directly contributed to research that's been used in over 200 scientific journal articles that have been published. Now you might be wondering how it actually contributes to all the medical research and stuff. So I'll explain that before I get into how to run the program and all all that. So if you want to skip ahead directly to installing it, you can do that, but here's how it actually contributes to this research. Specifically, the Folding at Home project uses computing power to do calculations in, on what is called protein folding. And I'll give you a quick crash course in biology based on my understanding how this all works. So basically, all viruses have a protein shell encapsulating the viral DNA in them, and COVID-19 is no exception, and it has a specific protein on the outside it uses to latch onto the host cell to infect, and then it gets all its DNA in there, which then overtakes the cell. The infected cell's ribosome then uses mRNA from the virus as a blueprint to create protein chains that are used to reproduce the virus. And when this protein chain is being basically printed off the ribosome, naturally it goes from being a straight string chain to naturally folding itself into its final 3D structure in a way that is not fully understood right now. And this, by the way, happens with all proteins in all of our cells, not just proteins for viruses. And the important thing to understand though, is that the final 3D structure of the protein itself is extremely important to how it behaves and interacts with the rest of the body. So in this case, for an example, understanding the specific protein that is used by the virus to penetrate into other cells in the body, if we understand how that protein folds into its final structure, then we could potentially find a way to disrupt that folding so then it can't reach its final structure and then the virus cannot uh, propagate any further. So it can basically disrupt the virus in a way if we can disrupt that process of folding, but we have to know how that happens in the first place so that's why it's important. The problem is that while the body and cells and stuff do this folding process just naturally very quickly, a computer trying to figure out how to do it is extremely computer intensive. It takes a ton of processing power. So having a distributed network of computers all over the world, thousands and millions of people doing it can help tremendously speed things up. And like I said, the Folding at Home project has announced several coronavirus related projects that they can contribute to using all this processing power. So anyway, you're probably wondering at this point how to get started with this. The first thing you have to do is download the software, obviously, the Folding at Home software. I'll put that link right in the description to the download page. It has the Windows download right there, but if you're using Mac or Linux, on that page, just click alternative downloads to see the rest of it. And when you finish the installation process, you can actually choose two settings to either contribute anonymously, or you can create an identity, which is basically just a username, and then you can create a password for it if you want, so you can keep track of your stats. So you may as well choose an identity, and then you can also contribute to a team if you want. I did create a Theojo team if you want to join it. It's team number 237882, so you can put that in if you don't already have a team that you've chosen. And then that way we can all keep track of how much we've contributed to this as a group. Of course, obviously that is totally optional. After you install it and have it running, you'll see in the 
taskbar, there's a little icon for it, and you can right click to get to the settings. There's two settings, either the web interface, which is definitely the easiest, or the advanced control, which has more settings. The web interface is probably the easiest though. It'll just open up in a web browser. If it starts acting weird, like it keeps refreshing and, or it doesn't load completely, you can just copy the link and put it in like another browser like Microsoft Edge. That's kind of what I had to do, so just know that. Now to contribute to coronavirus, since coronavirus is prioritized, all you have to do is choose any disease. And Folding at Home on Twitter has said that if you choose any disease, it will all go to coronavirus research because it's prioritized. And then while it's running, it'll also show that it's contributing to a coronavirus project right in that interface. And you can also choose the amount of power, either light, medium, or full power from your computer. And you can also choose whether you want it to happen while you're working, basically all the time, or just while your computer is idle. You probably just wanna keep it on medium or light. If it's on full power in my experience, then the fans might start running faster. It'll generate a lot of heat that'll heat up the room, stuff like that. And also probably makes most sense to just have it on while idling. Otherwise, it might get kind of annoying if the fans are running faster than usual. So medium or light on idle, totally fine. You can let it go at night and then it'll do a lot of work. And once it has started going, you can see, like I said, which project it's contributing to specifically. It'll say coronavirus project. It'll show you how many points, the work unit you're working on, and the work unit is basically a group of calculations assigned to each computer. And keep in mind, you can close the browser. It just keeps running in the background. The web browser is literally just an interface to change the settings. In the advanced viewer, it's pretty much the same stuff. You just get a few more extra settings. So you'll see what devices can contribute. So either CPUs or GPUs. And one example of an extra feature is you can individually select by right-clicking which devices can work all the time and which are idle. Whereas if you just use the web interface, then it'll just basically do all of them. Or you can change a setting in the advanced viewer and keep using the web controller. You can use both at the same time if you want. Now, like I said, normally you can view your stats and see how many points you've contributed either as an individual or as a team. But apparently recently, so many people have started uh, signing up for Folding at Home, so many more people that the database for keeping track or at least displaying the stats has kind of become overloaded. From what I understand, they are still keeping track of the stats. Just the API that's showing on the website is a bit overloaded. So if you try to check now, it'll say like bad gateway. So just check back. But right now, just understand the stats aren't working, they should soon. I also believe that the web client would normally show the stats and stuff for the team too. So that's again, one that'll probably be fixed at some point. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Just go to the link in the description to get all set up. If you guys wanna keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is one I made just recently talking about really useful Windows productivity software that might come in handy if you have to start working from home because of this whole coronavirus going around. So I'll put that link right there, you can just click on. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.